Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am going to be talking about something that I've not really talked about before on this channel. I've written about it in my blog and I've kind of touched on it in videos before but I've never made an actual whole video on it and that is OCD. Specifically my OCD, uh, my OCD story basically. If you didn't know OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder and, and I've suffered from this since I was a child. It wasn't ever diagnosed until I was 16 because that's when I entered the mental health services. I'm going to talk about how I first noticed it, how it kind of um, presents itself in me uh, because mine isn't kind of atypical OCD and what you would think about as OCD. So when you think of OCD you think about people that are clean and tidy and like things in a certain way. That's kind of the stereotypical image. OCD is actually a severe mental illness and it can be debilitating. Um, incredibly painful. Everyone who has OCD, as with any mental illness, presents differently and they have different symptoms and different uh, characteristics with their illness. For me, it's kind of difficult to pinpoint a specific thing and say that this is what my problem is. As a blanket way of describing it, I would say it's thing about things feeling right for me. So if something doesn't feel uh, right, whether that's with feeling dirty or feeling um, if I touch something and needing to touch something else or if I'm feeling and then there's also the side of it where it's like if something I've done I feel like it's going to trigger something else off like a bad set of circumstances um, and I'm going to kind of talk about all of those as much as I can um, the reason I wanted to make this video now I was actually planning to make this video anyway but one of the reasons why I wanted to is because I'm actually suffering from um, I had to go to the dentist last week because one of the things I have is a facial tick um, it came back last year after going away for a few years, it came back at the end of last year and I've actually worn away part of my gum um, because of it, because I basically constantly do this and just move my mouth around when I don't need to but it, I do it because it doesn't feel right and I feel compelled to, um, uh, which is where the uh, compulsion part of OCD comes in. Um, I used to have, I've had a few facial tics uh, throughout throughout my life, um, this is the only one that remains. And actually OCD is one of the thing, one of the only things I managed to get uh, a grip of and I was kind of not free of it but I had it under control for many years and then the last year or so as my anxiety has gotten worse I would say my OCD has gotten worse as well and then uh, a few weeks ago I've started back again on sertraline because sertraline is supposed to be really good for not really as an antidepressant but an anti-anxiety and it's supposed to be good for OCD so I'm hoping that that works because my gum hurts. <laughs> I'm going to start off talking about how I first noticed it and how it first presented itself. Um, it sounds, it's really hard to describe but basically when I was young, I'd say between the ages of sort of six and ten, I would uh, try and imagine something in my head so like uh, I'd imagine the first thing I remember was uh, swimming. I was trying to like remember in my head, like picture in my head, how you go swimming, like when I was learning to swim. And instead of being able to push myself off from the side of the swim pool in my head, I was doing like circles and circles and circles. And no matter what I did, I couldn't control what was going on in my head. I was like, well, why can't I, you know, I'm the one thinking this, so why can't I think of myself like pushing away from the swim pool? And that's kind of like the first thing that I remember of not feeling able to control my thoughts on what I was what I was thinking and not being able to push a thought out of my head um, and then I kind of started to develop a few kind of uh, compulsions such as uh, with drinking water um, like rinsing the glasses out uh, three times and certain things and I'm from the ages of sort of 10 over I had the kind of the whole things feeling right things so if my hand grazed something on the right I'd have to graze it on the left and if it didn't quite feel even I'd have to do it again and again and again until it felt even it was the same with walking along outside if I stood on a crack or a pavement that was slightly raised and if I'm different to my left foot then I would have to do it with the other foot and keep going and going and going and um, I remember scratching my hand on a wall once because I'd grazed, just like grazed it um, as I was walking past on a brick and I kept having to go back and do it and like I grazed my knuckles because I just I couldn't stop doing it. When I uh, started secondary school as I said I had like the facial tics, I had um, mouth, my nose, I used to twitch my nose like a rabbit and I would like obsessively like 
do this to my ears, like again, feeling right and making it feel even. And the other thing that I did, which was um, the two main ones, was my mouth and there was one with my teeth as well. I would go through and I'd touch like all my teeth against each other and I'd do it until it felt right and I'd do it and do it and do it over and over. And the other one is the same with my hands. Like I would pull the skin back from my fingernails and do that over and over and over. You know, that didn't cause me any problems. It wasn't like painful or anything, but it was just so fucking annoying because you are doing it over and over and over again and you can't do things with your hands. It's not something that I do anymore, but if people do that, then it kind of puts in my head, like just hearing the noise a bit or just seeing people do it or accidentally doing it to myself, then I it gets my head into thinking, well, I need to do it. I need to make it feel right. and. I try and keep it under control. Part of my OCD was, I don't know if it's like a different, there's a dog doing his shit outside my window. Part of my OCD was um, characterized as obsessive intrusive thought disorder. And that was, um, they kind of put it under the same term as OCD. I mean, I can't remember, this was a very long time ago, but they said it was part of the OCD, but it was just different. Um, and I would basically have, uh, like images and thoughts in my head that I couldn't get rid of. Like basically, whatever I didn't want to think, I was thinking. Like, if I would have um, uh, images and thoughts and just feelings like somebody was raping me or hurting me, um, like if I went to the doctor or something, like just being around people, it was like my brain was like, what is the worst thing I could feel right now that would make me feel really shit and really uncomfortable? And I would have that thought. And when I was in a hospital, when I was 16, for um, my eating disorder, um, I kind of developed a lot of things in there. I developed, I started self-harming. I didn't have any therapy when I was in there until the last week before I left. Um, I saw a psychiatrist for the first time, a psychologist for the first time, sorry. And I was put on sertraline and um, she explained something to me about OCD that I'm going to explain in a minute. But I'd say from February, I was in there from December to August and from... February until I left and then like for the years after I had this feeling that there was a knife at my neck or there was someone holding a knife to my neck and I had to wrap my neck in a scarf um, and if there was like pins on a wall or anything sharp near me I could feel it like I could see it and feel it coming and flying at me and stabbing me and hurting me so you know in the height of summer I was wearing this big thick scarf I don't even remember how that stopped uh, I just remember it was very uncomfortable and weird because I was just like wrapped in a big scarf and like a big hoodie to, you know, extra protection. And if I didn't wear the scarf, I felt like I had like someone there. And that's still something that, although I don't suffer with that anymore, I have uh, like when I'm lying in bed, I can't put my, I can't put like anything outside of the bed, like my arm or my foot or my leg, or whatever because I feel like there's someone there like inches away from me. Um, it sounds really silly and really childish, but it's not just like, you know, oh, there might be a monster under the bed. It's like actually feeling like there is something there. Um, and knowing that, you know, my brain is telling me that if I keep my hand there, I will get cut, I will get hurt. As I just said, the psychologist that I saw explained something to me. Um, she called it the like, pink, no, pink polar bear. And she said, if you say to yourself, just do not think of a pink polar bear, don't think of the pink polar bear, what's the thing you're going to think of? The pink polar bear. Because when your brain is telling you not to think about something, then you are thinking about it. And that kind of is something that I took with me and um, was repeated again when I went into therapy for my OCD later on about not fighting what you are thinking. And I will go into that further. Another part of OCD that I had was in terms of if I didn't text some certain things, like if I didn't end my messages with a kiss, that person would die. And um, if I didn't message at certain times, then my mom would get hurt. And there was like times when if she was late home from work and I was, I'd find something that I'd done wrong. And that's what, and you know, my brain was, got to a point where I was convinced that my mum, you know, she was 10 minutes late. And I was like convinced that it was because I hadn't done something, things, I had done something a certain way and she was like lying dead in an alleyway. As I have said, I've been into therapy actually twice for my OCD. First was like uh, just a short uh, session, like short series of eight, I think like eight sessions with um, the psychologist in my town. Like she only offered like, because there's like such high demand, you could only have like a very short period of time. And 
it was maybe when I was like 18, 19, um, I had a few sessions with her and we kind of tried to go through, work through like some of the intrusive thoughts and uh, the OCD and all of that and it was focused around that rather than my eating disorder or my depression. And it was at that time that I tried sertraline and I was for the first time and I was on sertraline for a couple of years. Um, I don't remember if it helped for a period of time. My OCD did start to get better. It wasn't so much to do with what I was doing, the, the tablets, I, I was learning to manage it. And um, a few years later, I went to an OCD group. This is when my mental health was managed by the eating disorders team in Northampton. Um, so it must've been about five years later. And I went to like a support group and it was run by a psychologist that worked from the Northampton Community Mental Health Team. It was a real eye opener for me because it was the first time that I was meeting people who didn't have the typical characteristics of OCD. Um, there was people who had things similar to me, people who had um, worse, not so bad, kind of uh, all different. And it just made me feel less alone knowing that these people felt the same as me and had the same similar things and there was something in there that really touched me. There was a man who had a newborn baby and he wouldn't let himself be alone in the room with it because he was terrified that something, or he was convinced that something was going to happen to the baby if he was on his own with it. Like it would, like his brain was telling him that the baby would die. Not that he would do something to it, but the baby would die or get hurt because he was in the room with it. Um, so he couldn't spend time with his newborn baby. And there was people who were obsessed with turning on and off switches, like lights and stuff. I don't think there was anyone who had the kind of typical, uh, tidy, clean OCD traits. Um, that's something that really bugs me because as someone who has suffered from OCD for a very long time, I'm not tidy at all. For me, as I've said, everything is about feeling right. So if I need to feel tidy, then I tidy. But it's more about feeling right that day. And it's the same with like cleaning my hands and washing. Like I'm not obsessive about it, but if I feel like my hands are dirty and um, even if they're not, even if they're clean, if I feel like, it's almost like I can feel like that there are germs like on that part, like tracing a line, I have to wash it off. And um, I kind of managed to keep that under control. The thing that I don't, and I've never been able to keep under control is the intrusive thoughts about what people are doing to me, about images and stuff. That's something that is, even at my best, that has never gone away and that's really hard to deal with. And as I said, the last few months, my mouth has gotten worse, like my, my tick. And when I watch back, like editing my videos, like I'm just doing it constantly and it's just, it's horrible because I feel so self-conscious about it. And it's like, if I'm lying on sand then like my mouth is just constantly moving, it's really annoying. But I'm hoping that the sertraline will help and I'm trying not to focus too much on it because the one thing that I know helps with everything, all the OCD things, everything that I have that's in this kind of under this umbrella is focusing on trying not to feel that way or focusing on trying not to think that way is the worst thing you can do. I guess this is kind of what I would offer advice wise to anyone who has, suffers from anything similar. When you have intrusive thoughts or you are compelled to do something that you you don't want to do or that you feel you have to do and all of that the worst thing you can do is try and fight it and try and push it out of your mind like if you're feeling like you need to wash your hands just trying to push it out push it out it's kind of it doesn't work like that because the more you're trying to push back the more you're trying to push the more it pushes back um, I know everybody's different and if you're under a clinical team who are telling you different then please obviously listen to them. I'm talking about my experience and what I've been told from different uh, specialists. Uh, with the intrusive thoughts, pushing them out and pushing them away is the worst thing that I can do. I need to just let them in and like with anxiety because I suppose it is a form of anxiety. It might get worse but it will flow back like a wave it ebbs and flows. If you are suffering and anything that I've said you can relate to then please talk to somebody because I know that it makes you feel really alone and isolated and you can feel like a freak because there's such an image of OCD. People don't might not realise that what they are suffering from is OCD and that's not me telling you to self-diagnose, it's just me saying if something isn't right in your life, if something is affecting you with your mental health, then do something about it, go to your doctor, uh, talk about it and try and understand that 
you're not alone there are people that feel like you and it can get better it might not go away completely you might have to learn to manage it but learning to manage it is about not letting it affect your life and that can happen i hope you found this video helpful if you like this video then please like it give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and share it around if you want and i will see you again soon bye